Module 5, AWS Security and Compliance. In Module 5, we will discuss key AWS security features as they relate to concerns about data security in the cloud. It is important for AWS customers to understand the shared responsibility model, and we will identify what security is provided in the AWS architecture and what additional security measures customers must take to appropriately secure their content. At the end of the module, we will briefly review how customers can leverage AWS certifications and compliance. Part 1, the AWS approach to security. Security is of great importance to all. Businesses and organizations of all kinds want to know, is the cloud secure for my critical applications and data? Security is the number one priority for AWS, including physical security, network security, and platform security. And it is reassuring that AWS customers inherit all the best practices of AWS policies, architecture, and operational processes. All AWS customers, big or small, benefit from a data center and network architecture built to satisfy the requirements of our most security sensitive customers. Many customers' security posture actually improves when they move to the cloud. In the cloud, you have better visibility into the state of all your infrastructure. AWS customers benefit from the ability of AWS to implement and maintain best in class security solutions and certifications. Additionally, customers benefit from requests and improvements around security that are driven by some of our largest and most demanding customers. Security is critical and must be implemented in every layer of the cloud application architecture. AWS provides a familiar approach to security that companies have been using for decades. It is important to note that AWS accomplishes this while allowing the flexibility and low cost of cloud computing, it is essential that customers know that AWS provides on-demand infrastructure while also ensuring the security isolation that they are accustomed to in their existing privately owned environments. AWS stresses a shared responsibility model for security. Under the shared responsibility model, AWS provides a global secure infrastructure and foundational networking compute, database, and storage services. AWS also provides higher level services and a range of security services and features that AWS customers use to secure their assets. AWS customers are responsible for anything they put on the infrastructure to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of their data in the cloud and for meeting specific business requirements for information protection. The shared responsibility model reduces the total security service area that customers need to take care of for themselves. They rely on AWS to deliver a secure platform that they can build on. With that narrower focus, customer security teams have a reduced security service area and can devote more of their attention to OS, application level security, and their own specific requirements. Their experts can focus on and achieve better results in the areas that are more closely related to the differentiated value for their business or mission, as opposed to the generic undifferentiated heavy lifting that applies to low-level security and compliance work as well as infrastructure management itself. AWS data centers are housed in nondescript facilities, and physical access is strictly controlled. Both the perimeter and building ingress points are protected by professional security staff using video surveillance, intrusion detection systems, and other electronic means. Authorized staff must pass two-factor authentication a minimum of two times to access data center floors. All visitors and contractors are required to present identification and are signed in and continually escorted by authorized staff. AWS only provides data center access and information to employees and contractors who have a legitimate business need for such privileges. The access of an employee who no longer has a business need for these privileges is immediately revoked, even if the employee continues at Amazon or AWS. All physical access to data centers by AWS employees is logged and audited routinely. When a storage device has reached the end of its useful life, 
The AWS decommissioning procedures include destroying the data, thus preventing customer data from being exposed to unauthorized individuals. This process erases each disk using the cleaning and sanitizing standards set forth in the DOD 5220.22-M, National Industrial Security Program Operating Manual, or NIST 800-88, Guidelines for Media Sanitization. All decommissioned magnetic storage devices are degaussed and physically destroyed in accordance with industry standard practices. Customers who have questions about security in the cloud. Our largest and most conservative customers have found that AWS is able to meet their security requirements and often can provide a better security profile than they can deliver internally. The AWS cloud infrastructure has been designed and managed in alignment with regulations, standards, and best practices, including PCI, DSS, COBIT, HIPAA, ISO 27001, and NIST, 800-53. Many enterprise customers have said that there are a number of certifications required for them to move their workloads over to AWS, either by their industry compliance or by the governance of their own companies. That's why AWS has methodically added a number of certifications that make enterprises more comfortable with moving their workloads into the cloud. The AWS network has been designed to permit you to select the level of security and resiliency appropriate for your workload to enable you to build geographically dispersed, fault-tolerant web architectures with cloud resources. AWS has implemented a world-class network infrastructure that is carefully monitored and managed. For customers who require additional layers of network security, AWS offers the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, which provides a private network address space within the AWS cloud and the ability to use an IPsec virtual private network device to provide an encrypted tunnel between the Amazon VPC and your data center. Network devices, including firewall and other boundary devices, are in place to monitor and control communications at the external boundary of the network and at key internal boundaries within the network. These boundary devices employ rule sets, access control lists, and configurations to enforce the flow of information to specific information system services. ACLs, or traffic flow policies, are established on each managed interface, which manage and enforce the flow of traffic. ACL policies are approved by Amazon Information Security. These policies are automatically pushed using the AWS ACL Managed Tool to help ensure that these managed interfaces enforce the most up-to-date ACLs. AWS has strategically placed a limited number of access points to the cloud to allow for a more comprehensive monitoring of inbound and outbound communications and network traffic. These customer access points, called API endpoints, allow secure HTTP, specifically HTTPS, access to establish a secure communication session with your storage or compute instances within AWS. To support customers with FIPS 140-2 requirements, the VPN endpoints and SSL terminating load balancers in AWS GovCloud in the United States operate using FIPS 140-2 level 2 validated hardware. In addition, AWS has implemented network devices that are dedicated to managing interface communications with internet service providers. AWS employs a redundant connection to more than one communication service at each internet facing edge of the AWS network. These connections each have dedicated network devices. You can connect to an AWS access point via HTTP or HTTPS using Transport Layer Security, or TLS, a cryptographic protocol designed to protect against eavesdropping, tampering, and message forgery. For customers who require additional layers of network security, AWS offers the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, which provides a private network address space within the AWS cloud, and the ability to use an IPsec VPN device to provide an encrypted tunnel between the VPC and your data center. Logically, the AWS production network is segregated from the Amazon corporate network by means of a complex set of network security or segregation devices. 
AWS developers and administrators on the corporate network who need to access AWS cloud components in order to maintain them must explicitly request access through the AWS ticketing system. All requests are reviewed and approved by the applicable service owner. Approved AWS personnel then connect to the AWS network through a bastion host that restricts access to network devices and other cloud components, logging all activity for security review. Access to bastion hosts require SSH public key authentication for all user accounts on the host. The AWS infrastructure has a high level of availability and provides you with the capability to deploy a resilient IT architecture. AWS has designed its systems to tolerate system or hardware failures with minimal customer impact. Data centers are built in clusters in various global regions. All data centers are online and serving customers. No data center is cold. In case of failure, automated processes move customer data traffic away from the affected area. Core applications are deployed in an N plus one configuration so that in the event of a data center failure, there is sufficient capacity to enable traffic to be load balanced at the remaining sites. AWS provides you with the flexibility to place instances and store data within multiple geographic regions, as well as across multiple availability zones within each region. Each availability zone is designed as an independent failure zone. This means that availability zones are physically separated within a typical metropolitan region and are located in lower risk floodplains. Specific flood zone categorization varies by region. In addition to utilizing discrete uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, and on-site backup generators, they are each fed via different grids from independent utilities to further reduce single points of failure. Availability zones are all redundantly connected to multiple tiered one transit providers. AWS utilizes a wide variety of automated monitoring systems to provide a high level of service performance and availability. AWS monitoring tools are designed to detect unusual or unauthorized activities and conditions at ingress and egress communication points. These tools monitor server and network usage, port scanning activities, application usage, and unauthorized intrusion attempts. The tools have the ability to set custom performance metrics thresholds for unusual activity. Systems within AWS are extensively instrumented to monitor key operational metrics. Alarms are configured to automatically notify operations and management personnel when early warning thresholds are crossed on key operational metrics. Technical personnel are always on call to respond to operational issues immediately, and preventative measures are implemented to ensure reliability. AWS security monitoring tools help identify several types of traditional network security issues, and you can implement further protection. When attacks are identified, the AWS incident response process is initiated. In addition to monitoring, regular vulnerability scans are performed on the host operating system, web application, and databases in the AWS environment using a variety of tools. AWS security teams are subscribed to news feeds for applicable vendor flaws and proactively monitor vendors' websites and other relevant outlets for new patches. Distributed Denial of Service DDoS attacks. AWS API endpoints are hosted on large, internet scale, world class infrastructure that benefits from the same engineering expertise that has built Amazon into the world's largest online retailer. Proprietary DDoS mitigation techniques are used. Additionally, AWS networks are multi homed across a number of providers to achieve internet access diversity. Man in the middle, MITM attacks. All of the AWS APIs are available via SSL protected endpoints, which provide server authentication. Amazon EC2 AMIs automatically generate new SSH host certificates on first boot and log them to the instances console. You can then use the secure APIs to call the console and access the host certificates before logging into the instance for the first time. We encourage you to use SSL for all of your interactions with AWS. Pack 
rapid sniffing by other tenants. It is not possible for a virtual instance running in promiscuous mode to receive or sniff traffic that is intended for a different virtual instance. Although you can place your interfaces into promiscuous mode, the hypervisor will not deliver any traffic to them that is not addressed to them. Even two virtual instances that are owned by the same customer, located on the same physical host, cannot listen to each other's traffic. Attacks such as ARP cache poisoning do not work within Amazon EC2 and Amazon VPC. Although Amazon EC2 does provide ample protection against one customer inadvertently or maliciously attempting to view another's data, as a standard practice, you should encrypt sensitive traffic. IP spoofing. Amazon EC2 instances cannot send spoof network traffic. The AWS controlled host based firewall infrastructure will not permit an instance to send traffic with a source IP or MAC address other than its own. Port scanning. Unauthorized port scans by Amazon EC2 customers are a violation of the IP spoofing. Port scanning. Unauthorized port scans by Amazon EC2 customers are a violation of the AWS acceptable use policy. Violations of the AWS acceptable use policy are taken seriously, and every reported violation is investigated. Customers can report suspected abuse via the contacts available on our website at aws.amazon.com forward slash contact dash us forward slash report dash abuse. When unauthorized port scanning is detected by AWS, it is stopped and blocked. Port scans of Amazon EC2 instances are generally ineffective because by default, all inbound ports on Amazon EC2 instances are closed and are only open by you. Your strict management of security groups can further mitigate the threat of port scans. If you configure the security group to allow traffic from any source to a specific port, then that specific port will be vulnerable to a port scan. In these cases, you must use appropriate security measures to protect listening services that may be essential for the application from being discovered by an unauthorized port scan. For example, a web server must clearly have port 80 HTTP open to the world, and the administrator of this server is responsible for the security of the HTTP server software, such as Apache. You may request permission to conduct vulnerability scans as required to meet your specific compliance requirements. These scans must be limited to your own instances and must not violate the AWS acceptable use policy. The AWS production network is segregated from the Amazon corporate network and requires a separate set of credentials for logical access. AWS developers and administrators on the Amazon corporate network who need to access AWS cloud components must explicitly request access to the AWS access management system. All requests are reviewed and approved by the appropriate owner or manager. Employee access is reviewed every 90 days an explicit reapproval is required or access to the resources is automatically revoked. Access is also automatically revoked upon termination or upon change in the job function. AWS conducts criminal background checks during the pre-employment screening practices for employees, as permitted by law and commensurate with the employee's position and level of access. Lastly, AWS Security has established a credentials policy with required configurations and expiration intervals. Passwords must be complex and are forced to be changed every 90 days. Security is not only built into every layer of the AWS infrastructure, but also into each of the services available on that infrastructure. AWS services are architected to work efficiently and securely with all AWS networks and platforms. Each service provides extensive security features to enable you to protect sensitive data and applications. The compute layer is secured by dedicated and isolated compute instances. Dedicated instances are Amazon EC2 instances that run in a virtual private cloud, VPC, on hardware that's dedicated to a single customer. 
your dedicated instances are physically isolated at the host hardware level from your instances that aren't dedicated instances and from instances that belong to other AWS accounts. Different instances running on the same physical machine are isolated from each other via the Zen hypervisor. The AWS firewall resides within the hypervisor layer between the physical network interface and the instance's virtual interface. All packets must pass through this layer, so an instance's neighbors have no more access to that instance from any other host and can be treated as if they are in separate physical hosts. The physical RAM is separated using similar mechanisms. Customer instances have no access to raw disk devices, but instead are presented with virtualized disks. The AWS proprietary disk virtualization layer automatically resets every block of storage used by the customer so that one customer's data is never unintentionally exposed to another. Security within Amazon EC2 is provided on multiple levels. The operating system of the host platform, the virtual instance OS or guest OS, a firewall, and signed API calls. Each of these items builds on the capabilities of the others. The goal is to prevent data contained within Amazon EC2 from being intercepted by unauthorized systems or users and to provide Amazon EC2 instances themselves that are as secure as possible without sacrificing the flexibility and configuration that customers demand. For the host operating system, only administrators with a business need are granted access to the management plane using multi-factor authentication. This gives them access to administration hosts specifically designed built, configured, and hardened to protect the management plane of the cloud. All such access is logged and audited. When an employee no longer has a business need to access the management plane, the privileges and access to these hosts and relevant systems are revoked. Virtual instances and guest operating systems are completely controlled by the customer with full root access or administrative control over accounts services, and applications. AWS does not have any access rights to customer instances or any guest OS. A base set of security best practices is recommended that include disabling password-only access to guests. Some form of multi-factor authentication should also be used for access to EC2 instances, or at a minimum, use certificate-based SSH version 2 access. Additionally, you should employ a privilege escalation mechanism with logging on a per-user basis. Amazon EC2 provides a complete firewall solution. This mandatory firewall is configured in a default deny-all mode for inbound connections, and customers must explicitly open the ports needed to allow inbound traffic. The traffic may be restricted by protocol, by service port, or by either individual source IP or classless interdomain routing or CIDR block. The firewall can be configured in groups for many different classes of instances to have different rules. Consider, for example, the case of a traditional three-tiered web application. The group for the web servers would have port 80, HTTP, and or port 443, HTTPS, open to the internet. The group for the application servers would have port 8000, application-specific, accessible only to the web server group. The group for the database servers would have port 3306, MySQL, open only to the application server group. All three groups would permit administrative access on port 22, SSH, but only from the customer's corporate network. Highly secure applications can be deployed using this expressive mechanism. The firewall isn't controlled through the guest OS. Instead, it requires your X.509 certificate and key to authorize changes, thus adding an extra layer of security. AWS supports the ability to grant granular access to different administrative functions on the instances and the firewall, giving additional security through separation of duties. The level of firewall security depends on which port you open, for how long, and for what purpose. The default state is to deny all incoming traffic, and you should plan carefully what you will open when building and securing your applications. Well-informed traffic management and security design are still required on a per-instance basis. AWS further encourages you to apply additional per-instance filters 
with host based firewalls such as IP tables or the Windows firewall and VPNs. This can restrict both inbound and outbound traffic. API calls to launch and terminate instances, change firewall parameters, and perform other functions are all signed by your Amazon Secret Access Key, which could be either the AWS account Secret Access Key or the Secret Access Key of a user created with AWS IAM. Without access to your Security Access Key, Amazon EC2 API calls cannot be made on your behalf. In addition, API calls can be encrypted with SSL to maintain confidentiality. Amazon recommends always using SSL protected API endpoints. IAM also provides control for what APIs an IAM user has permissions to call. When configuring EC2 security, the goal is twofold. First, to prevent data contained within EC2 from being intercepted by unauthorized systems or users. And second, to provide EC2 instances that are as secure as possible without sacrificing the flexibility and configuration that customers demand. Amazon RDS has multiple features that enhance reliability for critical production databases, including database security groups, permissions, SSL connections, automated backups, database snapshots, and multi-availability zone deployments. Database instances can also be deployed in a virtual private cloud for additional network isolation. You can encrypt connections between your application and your database instance using SSL. For MySQL and SQL Server, RDS creates an SSL certificate and installs the certificate on the DB instance when the instance is provisioned. You can also encrypt your data at rest natively within RDS. When you use the DynamoDB service, each request of the database must contain a valid HMAC SHA256 signature, or the request is rejected. The AWS SDKs automatically sign your request and manage your AWS security token service credentials as required for Amazon DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB is accessible via SSL encrypted endpoints. The encrypted endpoints are accessible both from the internet and from within Amazon EC2. Amazon S3 provides multiple options for protecting data at rest. Customers who prefer to manage their own encryption keys can use the AWS Key Management Service, KMS, or a client encryption library like the Amazon S3 encryption client to encrypt data before uploading to Amazon S3. Alternatively, you can use Amazon S3 server-side encryption, or SSE, if you prefer to have Amazon S3 manage encryption keys for you. With Amazon S3 SSE, you can encrypt data on upload simply by adding an additional request header when writing the object. Decryption happens automatically when data is retrieved. AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, allows you to create and manage the permissions for the users within your AWS account. A user is an identity with unique security credentials that can be used to access AWS services. IAM eliminates the need to share passwords or keys and makes it easy to enable or disable a user's access as appropriate. IAM enables you to implement security best practices such as least privilege. To do this, you use IAM to grant unique credentials to every user within your AWS account and grant access to only the necessary AWS resources. Since IAM is secure by default, new users have no access to AWS until permissions are explicitly granted. Additionally, IAM supports temporary access for situations such as federation with your existing Microsoft Active Directory, LDAP, or Kerberos services, or single sign-on. AWS also supports multi-factor authentication for another layer of security and makes it easy to rotate access keys and certificates on a regular basis. AWS CloudTrail is a web service that records AWS API calls for your account and delivers log files to you. The recorded information includes the identity of the API caller, the time of the API call, the source IP address of the API caller, the request parameters, 
and the response elements returned by the AWS service. AWS provides customers the flexibility to place instances and store data within multiple geographic regions. Each region is an independent collection of AWS resources in a defined geography. The selection of a region within an acceptable geographic area to the customer provides a solid foundation to meeting location-dependent privacy and compliance requirements, such as the EU Data Privacy Directive or similar applicable privacy regulations. Customer data is not replicated between regions unless proactively done so. This allows customers with data placement and privacy requirements to establish compliant environments. All communications between regions is across the public internet infrastructure. So you are encouraged to use appropriate encryption methods to protect sensitive data. Amazon S3, Amazon Simple Notification Service, and Amazon Simple Queue Service do not expose the concept of availability zones to customers. With these services, data is automatically stored in multiple devices across multiple facilities within a region. The AWS development process follows secure software development best practices, which include formal design reviews by the AWS security team, threat modeling, and completion of a risk assessment. Static code analysis tools are run as a part of the standard build process, and all deployed software undergoes recurring penetration testing performed by carefully selected industry experts. Our security risk assessment reviews begin during the design phase and the engagement lasts through launch to ongoing operations. AWS applies a systematic approach to change management so that changes to customer affecting services are thoroughly reviewed, tested, approved, and well communicated in accordance with industry norms for similar systems. The AWS change management process is designed to avoid unattended service disruptions and to maintain the integrity of service to the customer. Changes are typically pushed into production in a phased deployment, starting with lowest impact areas. Deployments are tested on a single system and closely monitored so effects can be evaluated. Service owners have a number of configurable metrics that measure the health of the service's upstream dependencies. These metrics are closely monitored with thresholds and alarms in place. Rollback procedures are documented in the change management ticket. Customers can receive notifications by email or through the AWS Service Help Dashboard at status.aws.amazon.com when service use is likely to be adversely affected. Security is not only built into every layer of the AWS infrastructure, but also into each of the services available on that infrastructure. AWS services are architected to work efficiently and securely with all AWS networks and platforms. Each service provides extensive security features to enable you to protect sensitive data and applications. To learn more about service-specific security, you can download the overview of AWS Security White Paper at the link provided here. The customer assumes responsibility and management of the guest operating system, including updates and security patches, and other associated application software, as well as a configuration of the AWS provided security group firewall. Customers should also carefully consider the services they choose because their responsibilities vary depending on the services they use, the integration of those services into their IT environment, and applicable laws and regulations. It is possible for them to enhance security and or meet more stringent compliance requirements by leveraging technology such as host-based firewalls host-based intrusion detection, prevention, and encryption. Because you're building systems on top of the AWS cloud infrastructure, the security responsibilities will be shared. AWS has secured the underlying infrastructure, and you must secure anything you put on the infrastructure. This includes your AWS EC2 instances and anything you install on them, any accounts that access your instances, the security group that allows outside access to your instances, the VPC subnet that the instances reside within if you've chosen this option, the external access to your S3 buckets, etc. 
This means that there are several security decisions you need to make and controls you must configure. AWS gives you many of these controls, but you have to use them. The AWS Trusted Advisor Customer Support Service inspects your AWS environment and makes recommendations when opportunities may exist to save money, improve system performance, or close security gaps. It provides alerts on several of the most common security misconfigurations that can occur, including leaving certain ports open that make you vulnerable to hacking and unauthorized access, neglecting to create IAM accounts for your internal users, allowing public access to S3 buckets, or not using MFA on your root AWS accounts. The AWS Trusted Advisor service is available to AWS customers who have signed up for the business or enterprise levels of AWS support. To learn more about AWS Trusted Advisor, visit the link provided here. Account management is a critical part of security, and your master account is a valuable asset because it has the root or admin level access. It is not recommended to use the root sign-in as the sole access to the account. As mentioned earlier, IAM allows you to grant unique credentials to every user within your AWS account with permissions only for the services and resources required to perform their job. IAM is secure by default. New users have no access to AWS until permissions are explicitly granted. After IAM users are created, all interactions with AWS services and resources should occur with IAM security credentials. There are multiple ways to group your IAM users. You could divide them by environment types, such as development environment, test environment, or production environment. By major system, by functional role, such as administrators, developers, or systems operations. By customer, or by risk level. You choose the configuration that provides the most security for your environment. The guest instance operating system account security is controlled by the customer and is separate from AWS accounts. Just because there is an AWS account doesn't mean you can sign into an EC2 instance. AWS uses public key cryptography to encrypt and decrypt sign-in information. Public key cryptography uses a public key to encrypt a piece of a data, such as a password, and then the recipient uses the private key to decrypt the data. The public and private keys are known as a key pair. With a key pair, you and only you can SSH into the instance or decrypt the administrator password. You are responsible for patching the operating system and applications running on your Amazon EC2 instance. You can use most traditional tools, and you can also use emerging tools such as Chef, Puppet, Fabric Cuisine, Capistrano, or Amazon OpsWorks. As you would do in your own data centers, you can protect privacy and enforce policies with data encryption. AWS offers a variety of encryption options for its services. You can encrypt Amazon EBS volumes and manage all keys associated with the encryption by using the Amazon Key Management Service. Amazon S3 supports pre-encrypted content, server-side encryption using customer managed keys, and customer key-based encryption with custom keys. You can also encrypt ephemeral volumes with a variety of options, such as BitLocker, ENCFS, Loop AES, and DMCrypt. AWS recommends that you encrypt your data whether it is in motion or at rest as appropriate. For data in transit, you can use SSL or TLS. For data at rest, Consider encrypting objects before storing them or writing them into a database or consider using encrypted file systems for sensitive data. AWS CloudTrail is a web service that records API calls made on your account and delivers log files to your Amazon S3 bucket. It records important information about each API call, including the name of the API, the identity of the caller, the time of the API call, the request parameters, and the response elements returned by the AWS service. This information helps you to track changes made to your AWS resources, answer simple questions about user activity, demonstrate compliance, troubleshoot, or perform security analysis. To learn more, visit the link provided here. The security measures that you already have in place probably also apply to the cloud as well, such as secure coding standards, penetration testing, 
antivirus apps where appropriate, intrusion detection, event logging, and role-based access control. The actions that Amazon Web Services takes, plus the actions you take, help make your environment and application secure. We have nearly completed Module 5. Before we finish, let's take a quick look at AWS certifications and compliance. Many AWS Enterprise customers need certain certifications in order to move their workloads over to AWS. These certifications are required either by industry standards compliance or by the governance of their own companies. That's why AWS has methodically added a number of certifications that enable enterprises to meet their security requirements while gaining full advantage of cloud computing. Often, they are able to achieve a better security profile than what they are able to develop internally. The AWS Compliance Program enables customers to understand the robust security in place and then helps them streamline their compliance with industry and government requirements for security and data protection. The IT infrastructure that AWS provides to its customers is designed and managed in alignment with best security practices and a variety of IT security standards, including the ones listed on this slide. While customers don't communicate their use and configurations to AWS, AWS does communicate its security and control environment relevant to customers. AWS communicates its security and control environments by obtaining industry certifications and independent third-party attestations, publishing information about the AWS security and control practices in white papers and website content. Additional details about the AWS compliance assurance programs are at the link provided here. Cognia specializes in the capture and analysis of voice and data communications, leveraging a unique cloud architecture to provide cloud services. In order to accept customer payments and process payment card data, Cognia must comply with the payment card industry data security standard, including physical security of the system. Cognia worked with a qualified security assessor to conduct a detailed analysis of their platform against the PCI DSS requirements. The assessor used the AWS PCI compliance package, including the AWS PCI attestation of compliance and the AWS PCI responsibility summary to understand the shared responsibility between AWS and Cognia. Through the shared responsibility model, Cognia was able to leverage the AWS physical security measures to achieve PCI compliance. Ian Hook, the chief operating officer at Cognia, explains, AWS removed almost the entire burden of compliance with PCI DSS Section 9, physical security, often one of the most significant challenges in a traditional shared dedicated hosting environment. In addition to physical security compliance, AWS also provides many pre-certified tools that can be leveraged to build a comprehensive PCI compliant environment. Cognia was able to provide the necessary segmentation and security for their PCI compliant service by combining their security tools developed in-house with AWS security features and Amazon VPC. Hook shares that our QSA was satisfied that services such as S3 were PCI compliant. So what remained was providing proof that we were controlling access to these resources correctly and that we were able to prove who has access to these files. Cognia has achieved PCI DSS level one compliance for their cloud environment. As a service provider, Cognia can pass along this benefit to its customers as a competitive advantage, and their customers have added reassurance about security. In addition to security and compliance benefits achieved through AWS, Cognia has also realized significant cost-saving benefits that allow the company to operate efficiently and maintain a competitive edge in the marketplace because AWS helps eliminate the capital expenditure cost normally involved in finding a suitable hosting facility and equipment and building assessing and running the infrastructure. This concludes Module 5 on Security and Compliance. In review, we have covered security features as they relate to concerns about data security in the cloud and the shared responsibility model. Additionally, we have learned how customers can leverage AWS certifications. 
following practice test items are not scored, but are a good way for you to check your knowledge and prepare to take the accreditation test. In the AWS cloud, you have better visibility into the state of all your infrastructure and you inherit the security level and certifications of the cloud service. Many AWS customers' security posture actually improves when they move to the cloud. Under the shared responsibility model, AWS secures the infrastructure and foundational IT components while the customer secures their content and anything they put on the AWS infrastructure. Correct. Because you're building systems on top of the AWS cloud infrastructure, the security responsibilities will be shared. AWS has secured the underlying infrastructure, and you must secure anything you deploy on the infrastructure. AWS provides a global secure infrastructure and foundational networking, compute, database, and storage services. The customer assumes responsibility and management of the guest operating system, including updates and security patches, and other associated application software, as well as the configuration of the AWS provided security group firewall. Correct. The IT infrastructure that AWS provides to its customers is designed and managed in alignment with best security practices and a variety of IT security standards. Congratulations! You have completed the Technical Professional course. We have covered basics of cloud computing, the AWS global infrastructure, and core services. In four common solutions, we have seen how these core services work to realize tangible results and we have been introduced to security and the shared responsibility model. In order to receive your accreditation, you must pass a test for this course and you may repeat the test to improve your score. We encourage you to continue learning about AWS services at aws.amazon.com.